we have been dealing with the plants and in the section of plant multicellularity we have dealt till now with the anatomy we are done with the various physiological functions that are being performed by the plant and remind you that the most vital function that an organism performs in order to maintain the continuity is the process of reproduction. So now we are going to deal with reproduction in the plants and our syllabus restricts us to study the reproduction in flowering plants. Now recall your knowledge from the previous class, class 11 where we have studied that there are five divisions, different divisions in the plant kingdom and the most advanced one was those of angiosperms. So in the angiosperms we had talked about that the most characteristic feature that distinguishes angiosperms from other kinds of plants is the flower. So what we are going to see over here in this chapter is that how do those plants which bear flowers, they reproduce. So the topic here is reproduction and development in the angiosperms or interchangeably you can say in the flowering plants. So what are the topics that we are going to study in this uh, chapter is these those which are listed over here. First one is the vegetative reproduction. Second is the structure of a typical flower which contains both male and female parts. The types of inflorescence, now this is uh, dealing with the morphological aspects of the plant. Male and female gametophyte, it brings back to the, it brings us back to the topic of reproduction itself. Then we have fertilization and last topic is the outcome of this entire process that is seed and fruit formation. So before we start the topic, I would uh, want you to brush your knowledge regarding reproduction. You know that the life of an organism is considered a waste if it does not reproduce. Now why it is considered a waste? Considering the fact that it is the process of reproduction only which enables the continuity of life, this is considered as a process which enables that the organism leaves its uh, mark in the living world. Okay, This is a very uh, gross language that I have used. Biologically speaking, the living organism must leave its progeny so that the continuity is restored and maintained. Now, uh, when I say that, you can very well imagine to the extent of this particular process, the extent to which this particular process is important, that just imagine if the first cell that was being formed, the living cell that was formed quite late earlier, uh, quite earlier, not late earlier, quite earlier in the historical times, if it wouldn't have produced, we would not have reached to the level of complexity in the living world that we have today. So this reproduction aspect is very, very important. Now every living organism reproduces, we know that and that is one feature that distinguishes it from a non-living organism. Talking about the reproduction, it is of two types. We have two types of reproduction, first is asexual reproduction and the second one is sexual reproduction. Now what does asexual reproduction mean and what does sexual mean and how they both are different, what are the points of differences, we are just going to take an overview. Asexual reproduction involves only one parent. A single parent would be able to give rise to its progeny whereas in the sexual reproduction there would be involvement of gametes, remember this word, gametes would be involved which would come from male parent and female parent. So we are going to get male and female gametes that is the characteristic feature of sexual reproduction. Now these could be generated on the same uh, body of the organism or there could be two different organisms where individually the body would be producing male gametes differently and the female gametes differently and we call that as male body and female body. There is a certain amount of terminology, huge amount that we are going to dedicate one lesson to completely where we are going to see what are the different aspects when we deal with sexual and asexual reproduction. For now what you have to keep in mind is that the asexual reproduction involves only one parent and there is no formation of gametes. And when we talk about sexual reproduction, there would be formation of gametes, both male and female gametes and they would unite by the process of fertilization and give rise to a zygote. Now these are the terms. 
certainly these are not the new terms you must be familiar with them so this is what we have to deal with and our main topic that is going to be studied in great detail would be the sexual reproduction because we are dealing with the flowering plants because flower is the site of sexual reproduction in a plant angiosperm we have little bit of discussion about asexual reproduction in this uh, lessons that are going to follow and a great detailed description and study of the sexual reproduction so coming back to what is the scope of this particular topic when we study it that how does plant flowering plant reproduce asexually the terminology for asexual reproduction in the flowering plant is vegetative reproduction because when we say that the plant angiosperm is going to reproduce asexually its vegetative parts that is stem root and leaves three of these these are the vegetative parts very precisely these parts are going to be involved in giving rise to a new plant okay a new angiosperm would be born out of the vegetative parts which would not involve the formation of gametes that particular aspect of reproduction is termed as vegetative reproduction we are going to study about that various agents and uh, various agencies rather i would say various methods in which the plant reproduces by vegetative reproduction our next topic would be the structure of a typical flower that we are going to study we'll see what are the different worlds you'll get to know what they are it is again a morphological aspect we are going to study the structure of a typical flower and the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis of the plant is termed as inflorescence so we are going to study that as well for now you have to keep in mind that inflorescence is a term that enables us to understand how the flowers are arranged on the plant itself moving further when we are well versed with when we would be well versed with these two aspects of the plant flower and uh, then we will come to the sites where the male and female gametes would be formed inside the flower as i told you in the beginning that flower is the site of sexual reproduction in a plant we are going to see that the gametes male and female gametes which would take part or which would participate in the sexual reproduction they are formed within the flower so within the flower the region that is responsible for giving rise to the gametes is known as gametophyte remember this term i'm repeating it gametophyte is that particular region or that particular uh, cell or cellular arrangement within the flower which gives rise to male and female gamete so we are going to study the male and female gametophyte and their structures how they are formed that would be covered followed by the process of fertilization where the male and female gametes which are formed within within these gametophytes would unite and give rise to a zygote so we are going to study the fertilization followed by the formation of the zygote would followed by the formation of embryo this zygote would later on develop into an embryo that embryo would give rise to seed so we have the last topic that is seed and fruit formation so this is all we are going to study and the next lessons that you're going to see would be dedicated to understanding of these topics